us as young men have made these same mistakes. You're 19, right? My first child I had when I was 19, all right, with my wife who was 21. And we struggled, brother. We struggled for years. You understand? I was in college. She was in college. I was playing uh, college basketball. I didn't have a job. So we struggled. So you as our little brother, we're trying to get you to not have to go down the same path that we went down. You understand what I mean? That's why the Bible says, read that real quick again. Watch this real. Watch what the Bible says about marriage being honorable. Watch this. Read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Bring it on. Marriage is honorable in all. So to God, marriage is honorable. So when you do the right thing and you marry that sister, then you open yourself up to be blessed by God. But a lot of times in the black and Hispanic community, we get caught up in baby daddy, baby mama drama. Right. Abortions, right? Go through a lot of problems, a lot of trial and tribulation because we won't follow God's blueprint. From the beginning of time, when God made a man, what's the first thing he created after he created that man? He created that woman from his rear. And she was called one man, which means from man. And those two shall join together and be one flesh and bring forth the Holy Spirit. The problem in the black and brown community is we like the sex, but we don't like the responsibility that comes from it. Right. You're having sex unprotected, and you're having a baby, but you're not really ready for it mentally. Right. You think you are because you see so many of your peers doing it. Just like I saw my peers doing it, I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. And this is why your brothers are trying to give you godly counsel on how to stop these conditions from happening in our community. Right. That's why the Bible says marriage is honorable. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled. Because with your wife, you can do what you want to do in the bedroom. Because that's your wife. You know she ain't with nobody else. She know you ain't with nobody else. Right? right? Go ahead. But whoremonger. A whoremonger is a man that sleeps with women that he does not have any intention of marrying. Okay, go ahead. And adulterers, God will judge. Like the officer was about to bring out, like STDs. When you look at black and brown community, we lead the nation in STDs. Right. We lead the nation in gonorrhea, syphilis, AIDS, herpes, uh, simplex one, herpes, simplex two. STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Black right. and brown community lead the world in those things, my brother. And you see these things happening. One day you come to the, use the bathroom and it burns or it bleeds. And we wonder why these things happening to us. It's because we are being immoral breeders. Right. We're being immoral with our sexual behavior. You know what I'm saying, sis, right? This is what we do in our community. We have sex at a, at a high rate. And we have children at a high rate, and guess what? We also have abortions right. at a high rate. Bring it on! 19 million young black and brown babies have been killed since the 1970s because we don't do right sexually. Right? Come on. Verse 5. Now go to now go watch this. One more scripture for you. Give me Sirach 29, 21. So this is what God said you're supposed to have in place as a man before you start having sex with a woman. Y'all together, right? I see the hickey on his neck. You got a hickey on your neck. Who put that hickey on your neck, young brother? All right, see, so that's what I'm saying. You ain't ready for that. You're a child. Read it for me. The book of Sirach, chapter 29 and verse 21. This is, what God, this is what God said a man's supposed to have before he start having sex with a woman. Go ahead. The chief, the chief thing for life is water. So you're supposed to be able to provide that woman water, right? Go ahead. And bread. And bread, meaning food. Go ahead. And clothing. And clothing, read. And a house to cover shame. Not living with your family. Not living with your mother, not living with your father. The Bible says you're supposed to give that woman a house to cover her shame. Bring it out. That's what we're supposed to have. Food, clothing, water, and a house to cover shame. If you don't have those things, you shouldn't be having sex. Right. Right. If you can't provide those things, you shouldn't be having sex with a woman. Right. Because now what you've done is you've opened yourself up to a spiritual issue. Right. You're thinking that it's physical. It's not physical. These are the things God says black and brown men, which are the Israelites according to the Bible, are supposed to have in place this. Right. Right. The man you're speaking with is supposed to marry you. Yeah, you understand? Go. I just think you got to leave, young king. Right. Hey, one next thing, too, you need to get rid of that cross. You need to get rid of that cross. Because that cross is a symbol of white supremacy. Right. When they came against us, the conquistadors, and they murdered us, they came with that cross. You understand that, sis? Where you from? I heard an accent. Where you from? You from Durham? Okay, so you from the States then? You from born here in the United States? All right, so what's your nationality according to the Bible? What is your race according to God? Because God got races in the Bible. You know that, right? Did you know that? You know that. Okay, all right. But you grew up in church. You grew up going to church? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. I didn't know nothing about the Bible either. But in the Bible, there are 18 different nations. Right. You come from one of those nations. Which one do you think you come from? Come on over, sis. Come on over. Come on over. Come get some of that wisdom. You like you got some yourself. Come on, get some more. 
The Bible says there are 18 nations in the Bible, okay? And then there's one nation that God chose. Did you know God had a chosen nation? Bring it out! That he held to a higher standard than everybody Bring it else? Out. Did you know that? She said she did. Give me Isaiah 44 and 1. Let me show you something. So God has a chosen people, and those chosen people are held to a higher standard than the rest of the world. Watch this. Right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse 1. Bring it out! Yet now, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. So God chose the nation of Israel. Israel right. was a man named Jacob. He wrestled an angel, and God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Israel had 12 sons. Out of his 12 sons came millions upon millions upon millions of people. Right. Today we call them so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. So if you're an African American so-called, you descend from the nation of Israel. Right. If you're a West Indian, like a Jamaican or a Trinidadian, right, then you descend from the nation of Israel. Right. If you're a Hispanic so-called, you descend from the nation of Israel. That's right. you and me. Now watch this. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard that in your churches? Because remember, we weren't always living in America. We was somewhere else in the world and we had a name, right? We had a name. So what was our name before we came to America and they changed it? See how we don't think that back that far? We don't even consider it because we live in here going through stuff here. But God has a name for you, sis. Your name is the nation of Israel. Right. You guys chose a people. Bring it out. Read Israel, it means a prince that has power with God. We got power with God, but we right. don't know it. Now guess what we do? kill each other, murder each other, right. rape each other, right. have, babies, have babies with men we have no intention of being with, vice right. right. versa, men lay with women, have right. them put a baby in and then leave them, right or wrong. This is what's going on in our community, you know why, because we confused. You got that for me real quick, Deuteronomy 28, 15, I'm going to show you something real quick before you leave my sister. What was your name? Vernica. Vernica. Alright, watch this, Vernica. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. Read it But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is your ancestor, Moses. He's speaking to all these people. And he's telling them, listen, if you don't listen to God, watch this, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. Go ahead. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. That what will happen. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God said curses will come on the nation of Israel if they did not hearken to God. Let me ask you a question. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? Is it good or bad? It's a bad thing, right? You and I both can agree to that. So God said bad things will happen to his chosen people for them dis disobedience to his commandments. Now let me show you something. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. Thou shalt be drawn a wife. So you'll have a wife. And another man shall lie with her. So what happened during the slavery times when you got married? You remember, if you was a woman and I was a man and we were married, we both were owned by our slave masters. Meaning our bodies were under his rule. Meaning he can use your body to do whatever he wanted your body to do, and he can use my body even though you and I were married. During the time of slavery, they take your slave wives and have sex with them. Yeah. They would take the wife the wife from the slave quarters at night. And they would rape her and then send her back to her husband. Psychologically, what do you think that did to a black woman? Psychologically. Would she respect her husband after that? Would she think that he could protect her after that? Right. So who would she submit to? Would she submit to her husband or would she submit to the slave master? Why? Because he had rulership. He could do that to your wife. God told us that what happened to the children of Israel for disobedience. Right. Watch right. this. Go ahead. Thou shalt build an house, Ray, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Build the big house in the plantation of Carolina. South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee. Who built the slave master's houses? Bring it out. Bring it out. It was the slaves. Right. But did the slaves live in those houses? Absolutely not. No. You was outside in the slave quarter. Was back then was the same equivalent of the ghetto. Right, right. It was the same equivalent of the ghetto. It was we was out there cooking, playing cards, drinking, raping each other, murdering each other, sleeping with each other, eating chicken. We were doing all that in the slave quarters. Right, right. But the slave master had a double, a uh, two-story, three-story house that we built, but we could live in. Right, right. We built the White House. Slaves. Right. right. Who built the Lincoln Memorial? Slaves. Right. Who built Riley, North Carolina? Slaves. Right. Right. Who built Durham, North Carolina? Durham, North Carolina had something in the 1920s that was equivalent to Black Wall Street. It was burned down just like Black Wall Street. So they would tell us if we had something like your bootstraps, we'd be doing it, and they dropped dynamite on us. Right. 
showing that they never had any intention of us being free at all. all right. So now the Bible says that what happened to God's chosen people for disobedience. When you think of yourself as being less than you, you should never do that. That's because they taught you that. These are the things they taught us and put in our minds subconsciously. Now when we ask a young child who this man is right here, they say, oh, that's my savior. We ask a young child, well, who that is? They say the devil. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, that's somebody just gave you that name. They did that psychological. I feel you, I feel you, but the cookies is a gift. And that's what they do. They give you a gift and then they supplant some flip and some imagery in your mind. Right. You understand that? Now watch this before you leave, my brother. Watch this before you leave. So now we're talking about the children of Israel, these God's chosen people. Curses came on the children of Israel for breaking God's commandment. Watch verse 16. Verse 16. Watch this. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So when you look up the word ghetto, it comes from an old German word, right? Which means wherever the Jews resort. Right. So when you look at ghetto, ghetto is where the Jews are. Now what Jewish man have you seen in the ghettos of America? Right up. Not damn one. Matter of fact, he owned an apartment complex that the real Jews is living in. Right. So when you look at the Bible, it said we will be cursed in the city. When you want to go to the worst neighborhoods, when you want to go where they selling dope, when you want to go where the prostitution is, when you want to go where the murder is, the gang life. Like for instance, in Chicago, they pay people to help them tour O Block. They pay gang members to walk them around O Block and protect them. What other neighborhood or what other race of people go through that? The white man rolled through our neighborhood and he rolled his windows up and he looked at us like we animals in a zoo. Bring it up. Look how they sell dope to each other. Look how they raping their women. Look how they over there. Look at them two rival gang members murdering each other over there for blue and red. Over a color. How foolish of people are we? These are the things. How, what are potholes at? What are worst conditions at? What are drug infestations at? What a trap house at? Bring it trap up. house ain't in the suburb. Well, it is. You just don't know it's a trap house. Right. They're doing it legally. They do it through the pharmaceutical. You understand what I'm saying, King? But these are things that God is telling us about us. We his chosen people. He right. said we'd be cursed in the city. And watch this. Cursed in the field. Now, who picked the cotton field in North Carolina? Who's in the cotton field? Us. Right. South, South Carolina, Georgia. You right, right this time of year right now? Football season, they call it? Ride through Georgia right now. You're going to see cotton field after cotton field. Ride through North Carolina, South Carolina right now. You're going to see cotton fields everywhere as a reminder that your ancestors picked it for free. Now, in Mississippi, in the, in the, in the, in the 1700s, Mississippi was the fourth largest economy in the whole world. That's right. That's the right. state of Mississippi had more money than Germany, right. Russia, right. Belgium, right. Portugal, right. Spain. Right. One little small state. Right. Your ancestors picking 500 bales of cotton a day. And if you did pick enough cotton, what they do to you? Gave you 30 lashes on your back. Well, who are we? Bring it out. We are those people. Yeah. Yeah. We are those people. It's not the Jewish man that live over in Israel today that some of y'all sympathize with over because he's over with the Palestinians, even though he's been murdering Palestinians for over the years. Right. He's been murdering Palestinians and trying to take their land since 1917 with the Balfour Declaration. Y'all think Negroes don't know about that. But right. oh, we actually read. And we know about the history of what's going on in Palestine. Right. You got war between two people who land and ain't even heard. Now black goes over here talking about pray for Israel. Don't pray for yourself and your people. Now right. right. watch this. It get better. Watch verse 4, 30, 32. Come on. Verse 32. Verse 30, come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given into another people. So when you go downtown in Raleigh, North Carolina, you go downtown to Charleston, South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Jackson, Mississippi, Atlanta, Georgia, you always see brick roads. And you say, what are those brick roads for? Why them brick roads? That's why the eight slaves were auctioned. Right. Just like Raleigh, North Carolina, I know some of y'all love it, and it's 2023, you think things have changed. But there's always a reminder that your ancestors were slaves put right there in your face. That's right. So now we look at what God said, for disobedience to his word, his chosen people will be sold on auction blocks to another race of people. Show me where the Jewish man was sold to another race of people. You won't right. find it. 
Show me where the Caucasian man was sold to another race of people for disobedience against God. You will not find it. But all throughout the country, all throughout the world, you see where blacks, Hispanic, and Native American Indians were put on auction blocks and separated from their families. That's God's word. Listen, you have not heard it because when you go to church, they program to give you a feel-good message and take your tithe money. But we're going to teach you the word of God raw and uncut, and we do not want your money. We want you to know the truth. Now the truth says, read it again. Thy son and thy daughter shall be given into another people. So your sons that you birth, your daughters that you birth, they came out of between your legs, woman. That your, that your husband had to protect you while they was in your womb. The Bible said at one time they were taken from you and sold to another race of people. Right. Now some of you might say, well that just happened back then. Well, what, happened on the, what happened on the border? What happened on the border when Joe Biden became president? Did they not take young Hispanic children and put them in concentration camps? Right. Are there not young Hispanic children that are displaced from their mothers and fathers right, right. now to this day? Right. Are they not selling our, ass, our brothers in Morocco? Right. Are they not selling our brothers and slaves in Libya right now? Right. So slavery ain't over. A lot of y'all just comfortable in America. Right. A lot of y'all right. slaves to your job. We work these jobs in fear. You scared to be late. I know I, I work a job too. You afraid to be late. You afraid to miss out on certain things at your job because you know that inflation is on an all-time high. You know you gotta take care of your children. So guess what? You a slave to that too. They made sure they kept us in slavery, kept us in bondage, brothers and sisters. This is why the Bible says, what we begin? Thy son and thy daughters shall be given into another people. They took our sons and daughters and they sold us another people. And thine eyes shall look. And he got a 12 year old son, which was mathematically that'd be crazy if he had him in 15. Let's move it back. Let's say you're 39 and you had a 12 year old son, right? So you had a son, and they would stand your son up next to you, and they would say things like, This is a young boy, 12 years old. He'd get out in the field, and that's what they do on the, uh, on the, uh, the NFL combat. Check his body fat, check his wings fat. Check his height, check his full uh, by full speed. You understand how high he jumped? It's the same thing. We ain't paying no attention. It's the same thing. So God says, our sons and our daughters are protected from us. And if we give it to another race of people, we're going to have to watch it happen. Go ahead. And fail with longing for them all the day long. So this is the word of God, y'all. This ain't me speaking. This is God telling you what happened to your ancestors to put us in a condition that we in today. Right. So called black, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, we are God's chosen people. Right. That's, That's the right. reason that we suffer these conditions. Some of y'all have forgotten your history, but we're here to remind you they sold us as slaves, they put us on the bottom of ships, they made our, mo our mothers their nursing mothers, they put, uh, we had fringes on at that time, they're going to keep change our name, change our language. All that happened is because we were disobedient to God, brother. Connection with God, but when we disobedient to His word, He brings judgments and punishments on us. Now, watch this. How do we come to America, King? How do we get here? Slave ship. What you say, bro? Slave ships. All right. Would you say the same thing? I know you work out. I know. We came on slave ships, though, right? Your ancestors they came on slave ships. All right. So watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 16. Let's see if that's in the Bible. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. Bring it out. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Give me Exodus 20 and 2. God said he was going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Anybody out here got a dollar bill? Does anybody I always like to use this analogy? Got anybody got a dollar bill? You got one? That's the best. That's the only man in history got a dollar bill. Today, so everybody got a dollar bill. He got a all right, look, so look at this. So watch this. On the back of the dollar bill, you see this right here? Check this out, brother. On the back of the dollar bill, there's a pyramid. You see that, King? Hey, you see it right here, brother? You see on the back of the dollar bill, you see that, right? There's a pyramid. What does that have to do with America? Why, why was the so-called founding fathers of America, when they established currency, why the hell would they put a damn pyramid on the back? What does that have to do with anything here? God told you. God left this as a sign. He put on their spirit to put this on the dollar bill. That's a reminder for you and I in the last days where we at. Bring it out. Yeah. Come on, read that 20 and 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the 
of the land of Egypt. God brought us out of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. What do you call Egypt? Out of the house of bondage. What is bondage? Slavery. Death row. God brought our ancestors out of Egypt, and he called the place we left slavery. Right. Right. Egypt means slavery. Right. 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 Back to Deuteronomy 28, 16. Remember the dollar bill. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God said, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. Egypt again. Egypt again. Egypt again. Right. Egypt again. With what? With ships. How do we get to America? This is in the Bible. Right. This was written way before any of us was born, so you know we ain't just making nothing up. Right. Moses told the children of Israel that we broke God's commandments. God will send us into Egypt on a slave ship. Right. How do we get to the Americas? On slave ships. Right. You can't refute that. That's world history. Freedom. It was called the transatlantic slave trade. That's right. Now, in the eastern part of the world, they have what was known as the Indian Ocean slave trade. When they took slaves from Africa, they took them to India, Sri Lanka, Yemen, Arabia. That's why you have Afro-Palestinians, Afro-Iranians. Now God finally loves you. Right. But the whole time God loves you. That's yes. why he put us in slavery. Right. He broke his commandments. We as children, we've been disobedient. Right. Read again, verse 20, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Right. With them. God told us he was going to bring us into slavery on slave ships. You can't refute that. That didn't happen to the white Caucasian Jewish man. Show me where the Jewish man went on a slave ship. Bring it on. He ain't never been on no slave ship. He ain't never been at the bottom of no ship with feces stacking up to the sky. He ain't never been on the bottom of a ship with a woman with her menstrual cycle on and she can't get no tampon. She can't get no type of cover. She can't get no type of breathe. Right. We right. ain't playing. When a black woman was on the bottom of the slave ship pregnant, it took a year and a half to get from that side of the world to this side of the world. So if she was pregnant. More than likely, she gonna have that child on the bottom of that ship. Right. Now, what happens when she has the birthing pains? She was locked down in chains. What happened when she wanted to have a baby? Was there any epidural? Did anybody cut the umbilical cord? Everybody's a slave. Everybody is chained. She just had the baby, and the baby flopped down on whomever was under it. Right. If the right. baby died or she died during birth, the slave master would come down there, snatch her body, and throw it overboard. Right. This is why. This is why the sharks, sharks have always been known to, to swim north and south. Why did the sharks start swimming east and west? To follow the slave ships. Your ancestors were slave, were shark food for 400 years. That's right. 400 years. Then you will come and say, oh, you guys are a hate group. You're a cult because you're telling the truth. No, wake up and repent and keep the commandments of God. Yeah. You the Israelites according to the Bible. Yeah. The Bible said we broke God's commandments. He put us on slave ships. Come on. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. Just like Moses said it was going to happen, it happened. Just like he said. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. And we have not seen those ancient Egyptians that drowned in the Red Sea again. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold. What happened when we got off the slave ship, family? What did they do immediately when you got off the ship? What did they do? They marched you downtown to these brick roads in Raleigh, North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and they sold you as a slave. Hey. And God said, what? Read it again. And there? And there ye shall be sold Read. unto your enemy. No, your friends. Your enemy. So who sold us? I want to see. I want to see who's going to stand up and hear the word of God. Who's going to repeat what God's word said? The Bible says you shall be what? And ye shall be sold unto your enemy. God said we were going to be sold unto our enemy. Go ahead. You can take your pictures. Take your pictures. We want you to see us. Israel united in Christ. Put it, up. Yeah. Put it up. Yeah. 
Spotify, and all your social media platforms. That's right. Let them know we out here to teach God's word. Thus saith the Lord. Right. We got cameras out here too. You can you can record. Right. It's all good. We want the publicity. Right. And we want our people to see the truth. Right. Bring it out. You understand? Go ahead. Read it again. And ye shall be sold unto your enemies. God said, since we were disobedient, we were sold unto our enemies. You see what you call Satan now? You see what happened, don't you? Go ahead. For bond men. For slave men, we were sold in downtown Raleigh. Read. And bond women. And we were sold in slave women. Now we got black folks mad at each other. Black women and black men always talking about how each other ain't ish. Right, right. Every social media platform is black men talking about how black women ain't no good. And black women talking about how black men ain't no good. Right. But we was all on the same slave ship. Right. 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 Now in America, they done turned us against each other. Right. right. Oh, that hoe ain't nothing. She nasty. Who nasty be? Oh, that nigga ain't ish. Now we destroy each other, y'all. God said no. Y'all the same people, y'all came on the slave ship together. We leaving with our black woman, you understand that, right? Right, That's right. right. We not leaving y'all here, y'all going with us. That's right. right. God take us up out of here, we taking the black woman with us. Right, That's right. That's person, when y'all get up out of here, y'all taking us with us. Right. All this drama, fighting against each other, all that stuff, they gotta stop. That's right. We the same people, we the same race. And God told us to stand up for each other. Right. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 